Hello, everybody. I'm Dave Franz. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, part of the Brooklyn College uh, crowd that's here. Very small crowd, but we're, uh, we're here. Before I get started, here to. Uh, uh, sorry, Dave, yeah, I just want to get this. Okay. Uh, the Waddles and Gromit business that was just mentioned, I, that's so interesting. I have a uh, five and a half year old granddaughter, and I'd like to check out what she's looking at and reading and getting videos for her. And I, I noticed that Wallace and Gromit are still on the list of approved uh, videos and books for uh, five-year-olds. So I'm glad to mention that. And you see I have a list here. You can probably think this is what I'm going to read to you or talk to you about, but this is actually a list that Musa gave you of things I shouldn't mention. So. <laughs> it's pretty long, actually. <laughs> Well, uh, my wife and I, uh, Judy, took be following me up here in a few minutes. Uh, we've been tasked to say a few words about Norman's Brooklyn College experience and um, the period of time that the Eaton spent in, in New York City. Uh, Judy and I arrived actually a little late on the scene. We didn't come down to uh, New York until 1973. Uh, Norman, of course, was already a full professor at that time. And I was a non-tenured, uh, newly minted associate professor. So ordinarily, we wouldn't be in contact with each other because he was a gray beard and I was pretty low in the totem pole. Uh, but uh, somehow or other, it, it didn't work out that way. Uh, the other thing is, and of course, as uh, has been mentioned, uh, Norman was a uh, microbiologist. Uh, and. Uh, I never saw the basement lab, uh, James, but when I got there, he had a beautiful lab, I think, on the third floor. Um, and uh, it was a pretty nice laboratory. And I uh, was afraid that he, since he was a microbiologist, I would be extremely clean and sterile and everything else that we expect from microbiology. And my own field was uh, ecology, uh, marine ecology and invertebrate zoology. So my lab was pretty much a mess. Um, <laughs> And I was afraid that Norman's lab would be one of those places that you could eat off the floor, which, which is the normal way that microbiologists live uh, in a sterile environment. So you can, you can imagine how surprised I was when I first visited Norman's lab. Uh, it was anything but sterile. Um, I noticed the trash cans. Uh, I don't think they've been emptied for a few weeks. Um, and whenever I went there, there were interesting people hanging around talking about stuff that I thought was pretty interesting, like. Uh, beer yeasts, wine yeasts, and, and the products that can be made from those things, uh, which were uh, high on the list of interests at, at that time uh, for Norman, his colleagues, uh, students, and, uh, and so forth. So uh, we got to know each other. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that happened, but uh, Norman, uh, well, the Eatons, the Franzes, and a few other uh, young professors at Brooklyn College uh, lived in uh, the Rockaway Peninsula. Most of you probably have not been to New York, or maybe you're not familiar with the geography of the area. Uh, but uh, Brooklyn College is obviously in the middle of Brooklyn. Uh, and uh, to get to where we lived, you had to drive south, and then there's a great big bridge that across the over Jamaica Bay, and then you end up on the Rockaway Peninsula, which is a, uh, a sand spit, basically, uh, barrier beach, uh, which is about four or five blocks wide. Uh, and there's nothing to do there except go to the beach. So uh, mm -hmm. once you live in the Rockaways, you're site, sort of isolated from uh, the culture of New York City in a way. Uh, and if you want to have a good time, you sort of make your own good time. And that's what we did. Uh, we eventually uh, introduced the Eatons, got to know them a little better uh, at some of the uh, department uh, uh, parties. And uh, I think Musa had her doubts about me originally, uh, but she came, she came around. And uh, we got to know the Eatons. And because we were, there was such a small group uh, in the Rockways, uh, we got together made our own good times, and the way we did that, of course, was by cooking and eating and sometimes even drinking. Uh, 
And, uh, and there is uh, where Norman's uh, genius really shown us as far as, as we were concerned. Uh, they were so kind to everybody, especially the young professors. Uh, we were always welcome uh, to come to their house. And when we got there, there was always food, there was always drink, there was always good wine, sometimes not the greatest wine, but still very good wine. <laughs> uh, usually beer, sometimes beer that was made by Norman students, which uh, was, uh, you know, we, we were young and we didn't know any better, so it was, as far as we were concerned, uh, it was pretty good. Uh, you know, uh, we had a, uh, a three and a half year old uh, little boy, and he was just as welcome as everybody else to come to the Eatons. And he's here now, he's, uh, I'm not going to tell you how old he is, but uh, he's considerably older than that. Has his own little uh, daughter at the, at the present time. Uh, so uh, at the Eatons, there were parties. Uh, we all had parties. We all went back and forth to each other's homes. Uh, but the parties at the Eaton's home was, uh, were special. And part of that uh, was because of Norm's cooking, as you all have heard about, and maybe experienced, most of you have probably experienced it yourself. Uh, Norman was a wonderful cook. He loved to cook. Uh, things that strike me as I look back on it uh, were soups. Uh, Norman loved soups. He would make all kinds. We, we really enjoyed those and the desserts. Uh, I think one or two were mentioned already, but uh, my favorite was the chocolate mousse. I uh, couldn't really get enough of that. Uh, well, not quite as fat as I used to be, but uh, we ate quite a bit of it. Uh, we drank a little bit uh, sometimes uh, in the evenings and sitting outside and enjoying the beautiful weather in the summertime in New York. Uh, uh, never too much, but I remember a rumor, I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard a rumor one time that there was a certain amount of skinny dipping that went on <laughs> at midnight uh, in the Atlantic Ocean a few blocks away. Well, I, I wasn't there, so uh, <laughs> I, I can't say if there's any truth in that rumor or not. But we we did uh, make uh, our fun. We Norman was, uh, as you know, a man of few words. Uh, he was not the sort of fellow that would come banging on your door you know, or on your laboratory door and welcome you to Brooklyn College. But uh, once you got to know the Eatons, it was, it was a lifetime friendship and, and, and love affair, as, as you can see from what's been said already uh, this morning. Unfortunately, all good things come to an end. And uh, I think it was 19. 89 that Norman decided to return to California mm. and that was a, a very sad thing uh, for all of us and, uh, but uh, as they say if, uh, uh, if if the mountain moves you have to move with it and uh, that's what we did we decided to visit California that's where Norman was we were going to come there too so uh, that was the beginning of a another uh, wonderful period in our lives Judy will say something about uh, in a minute or two. Uh, before she does, um, uh, we did a lot of traveling uh, with Norman and Musa. Once uh, Norman and, and Musa actually came to uh, be to California permanently, and uh, we did a lot of traveling in and around uh, New England and New York as well. We never were there, but uh, once out here, we, we came out here and spent. Uh, lots of time uh, with them traveling around the West Coast. And I can say one or two things about traveling with uh, Norman and Musa before Judy gets here. Uh, tells me I shouldn't say this. Uh, but uh, here are the three rules that, that you needed to follow to be successful in traveling with Norman and Musa. First rule was nothing before 10 a.m. Because that was considered the crack of dawn as far as Norman was concerned. 10 a.m. Okay, anything after that, you stagger down and we're ready to go. The second uh, law was that uh, there was a Gibson every night at dinner. Uh, and it, it better, you know, Moose said something about Norman already raising his voice once. I think it must have been uh, when his Gibson was served with an olive instead of an onion. Uh, perhaps it was another occasion as well. Uh, and the third rule uh, was 
No matter what you plan to do, clear it with Musa first. <laughs> those are the three rules uh, for traveling uh, with Norman and Musa. And uh, those were multiple travels. And my wife, Judy, might come up here now, uh, and she can uh, manage to get through this without crying, uh, say, say a few words.